Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel with your daily devotional here. Thanks for joining me. Um, reading today from Voices from the Past, a Puritan uh, devotional reading, reader, daily reader. And uh, this selection for today is from uh, a writer, a Puritan, English Puritan named Thomas Case, uh, 17th century, uh, wrote a bit about suffering, uh, understood it quite well. And uh, he draws from Psalm 25, 4, the verse that says, O Lord, teach me your paths. Um, he says, in the school of affliction, God gradually teaches us the lessons we need to learn. Fruit is not gathered all at once. There must be time for it to ripen. Do not become discouraged if God does not teach you all at once. He lets in light by degrees and teaches his children now a little and then a little some this week and more next, some by this affliction and more by the next. And so we see already that uh, for Case and for others, and I think from a biblical perspective, we can see um, that the, our understanding of suffering uh, is that, there, that, that God sometimes has purposes. God has uh, purposes and ways and means uh, that are beyond our imagination. We can't quite possibly see in the middle of what we're going through what God might want to teach us. And so Case is making the point that you may not know what it is today, you may not know this week, but uh, but that doesn't mean that God isn't busy and he isn't doing something. He's letting in light by degrees in terms of our understanding of what God is doing. If God has not taught you as much as another, do not say he has not taught you at all. Though God's teaching is powerful, it does not immediately pull the soul into an immutable evenness of spirit freed from all insurrections and disturbances. <laughs> and, um, and so those are some words that you may or may not be used to. Let me read it again. Though God's teaching is powerful, it does not immediately put, put the soul into an immutable evenness of spirit. Um, that would be another way to say that would be uh, an unchangeable... Um, uh, evenness, you know, it's all smooth sailing, okay, of spirit, freed from all insurrections and disturbances. Such a frame is only the privilege of the glorified state. Ah, there we go. So we have that um, understanding to look forward to, um, a, a much greater understanding when the Lord comes and wraps up human history, and we sh shall see him as he is in our eyes will be open to understand so many things that we don't understand right now. Um, so really, really good. David has had his sinkings, Case tells us, David the psalmist, um, and certainly we know that from just reading through the psalms ourselves. A, a third of them are lament, uh, where he's you know just, just uh, raising up his heart before God and expressing his his sorrow or his grief. Sometimes it's grief over his own sin. Sometimes it's uh, his his fear or his frustration. Uh, where's God? Where, why, why isn't God listening? And I love the Psalms for that. David had his sinkings, Case says. Job, his impatient fits. We have heard of the patience of Job, yea, and of his impatience too. That's really good. The taught of God may be moved, but not removed. They may fall, but not fall away. Fearfully, but not finally. Terribly, but not totally. Are we not aware of the whisperings of corruption in our members? Do we not rise with indignation and become displeased with the opposition we find in our nature? Is there not a regular need in prayer to spread our temptations before the Lord? Is there not a need to pray our hearts into a better frame? And here he's, he's really encouraging great honesty before God, just like with King David in the Psalms, isn't he? Um, and when we're struggling to understand, we should go before the Lord and say, we don't understand. And we should go before him and, and pray and plead with him for understanding. Um, is there not a need to pray our hearts into a better frame? And that's indeed what happens so often to me. I don't know if it does for you, but that's the way it works. Uh, so often I'm frustrated or I'm not understanding something and uh, uh, I get on my knees and it's not, that, it's not that all the circumstances change. It's not that they're all resolved. It's just that somehow or another, the peace of God 
moves in on me as I place myself before the Lord in prayer. Uh, is there not a need to pray? Yes, there is. Uh, it was said of Luther that when he found a distemper upon his spirit, he would keep praying until he had prayer, he, till he had prayed his heart into the frame he prayed for. And so sometimes, just like Luther, yeah, we, we would need to do that too. We would go before God and say, God, I'm not feeling all full of faith and ready to, you know, give, uh, get, get behind the next, uh, you know, rally cry or whatever. I, mean, I just don't feel it, you know. Um, but Lord, I want to want you. Lord, I want to hear, I want to want to hear from you. And uh, I love this about the Puritans. They're so good about uh, the inner wrestlings uh, of our hearts and our minds. Um, by God's instruction, we are able to maintain opposition against the evil we find in our own spirits. The life of a believer is a warfare, and certainly you can read Ephesians chapter 6 and, uh, and see that that's uh, something the Apostle Paul talked about. As God teaches us, the soul gradually gains ground against its fleshly opposition. And yeah, that's right. Uh, sometimes it's just my flesh. Uh, I'm tired, I'm weary, I'm, I'm blood sugar low, what might be any number of those different things that put my heart in a certain disposition and uh, less inclined to believe, less inclined to serve, less inclined to give, less inclined to, 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 to be devoted to the Lord. And uh, so God teaches us the soul gradually gains ground through prayer. Prayer brings in God and God gives strength to take back lost ground. That's true. That's so good. We are comforted that all will be done in God's time. And then Case closes it out by saying, I am not perfect, but I will be perfect. Philippians 1, 6. Thomas Case um, from Voices from the Past. There are a number of his writings in this. If you happen to like uh, some of these as I share them, uh, this might be a good book for you to get as well. Let me pray for us. Lord, thank you so much for another day uh, to live and breathe and have our being in you. And uh, Lord Christ, I do pray uh, that we would practice your presence this day. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'll um, uh, strengthen us, encourage us, that is, pour courage into us, and grant us uh, the faith that leads to repentance. Lord, that we might repent where that is needed. Lord, uh, grant us the strength and the hope um, as we uh, rise to meet the challenges of this day. And Lord, the uh, persevering um, uh, strength to be able to uh, endure during these times when things are so inside out and upside down, uh, whether that's just on a personal level, some struggle that we're having physically or emotionally, or whether that's uh, something on a quite a public level, uh, uh, going through another political season where there's such uh, acrimony and animosity between different people, uh, or whether, Lord, that is even uh, the pandemic itself, the whole worldwide thing that's going on. Uh, God, I pray that as we place ourselves before you, you would take our souls and, Lord, you would fill us up again with your presence and with the hope of the gospel. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen and amen.